Good morning. I hope you are surviving this cold, now sprayed winter, and especially the fathers this morning. I hope that you have been spoilt and that you are warm and snug. But this morning we really want to honor you. We know that being a father is a big task. It's a big ask and it's a big responsibility. And this morning I pray that each one of you will receive the grace from God to be the fathers that God has called you to be. And we honor you, we love you, thank you for everything that you do. And speaking about fathers, this morning we want to congratulate Emil and Danal. They are expecting their first little one in December. So for those of you that are watching with us, give a few high fives and a few claps and a, a few celebratory signs that go with it. We are so excited for you guys. And I know that Lapis had his birthday on Friday. Happy birthday, Lapis. We trust this is going to be an awesome year for you as well. And I don't know of any other birthdays or celebrations, but if you celebrated something this last week, let us know, put a note up on Facebook so that we can celebrate with you. And I really trust that for everyone that has something to celebrate, that you would truly see God's goodness reflected in your lives. Now this morning I have the privilege to be preaching on Lordship, a new master. And we are in chapter 3 of our one-to-one. -one. Um, we have truly journeyed through these first two chapters. And during this week in our connect groups, we've looked at Lordship. And isn't it incredible when we look at the foundational aspects again of our Christian journey and we realize that, wow, God is still speaking to me. There is still something more that I can learn. There is still an aspect that I haven't seen before. And that's the beauty of God's Word. So even for those of you who have maybe done chapter 3 of the 1 to 1 a hundred times, there is always something that the Lord wants to teach us and that the Lord wants to speak to us about. And I want to start this morning with Acts 2 verse 36 and it says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus you crucified, both Lord and Christ, meaning Savior. And if we look at the context of this verse, this was the first sermon that Peter preached after they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. This verse is a foundational verse on which the church is built, and it's a foundational verse on which our personal walk and our lives with Jesus needs to be built. God made Jesus both Lord and Savior. And last week we looked in chapter 2 at salvation, separation and salvation. And I trust that through that chapter, you truly found that assurance of your salvation. That you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are saved. That you have received through grace, by faith, the gift of salvation that God has for each of us. But like Joanne said this week in our devotionals, when Jesus came into our heart, He came in as Lord and Savior. We can't separate Jesus into Savior only or Lord only. What happens when we do that is we look at Jesus Savior and that's love. That's the forgiveness, the love. And when we look at him as Lord only, that is truth only. And it becomes legalistic and it becomes religion instead of relationship. And we need to combine both. We need to receive Jesus into our hearts as Lord and Savior. And often when I speak about Jesus coming to live in our hearts, I feel like a parent speaking to a child. Jesus lives in my heart. But you know what? There is really no better explanation for it. And Jesus, as Lord and Savior, comes into your heart. And He takes a special place in your heart. And that place is called all. Jesus wants all of your heart. Not just the portion, but all. And as we were preparing the sermon this week, Mike said that he can remember that for years he would hear sermons on Lordship. And every time he listened to these sermons, he felt condemnation. He felt like a failure. He felt like he wasn't measuring up to a certain standard. That no matter what he did, it wasn't good enough. Now that is condemnation and religion. That is where we feel we need to constantly do something 
to please God. We need to perform. But that's not what Lordship is. And I can guarantee you this morning that the devil is going to shout condemnation. The devil wants us to feel defeated. The devil wants us to feel like, let's just give up now. I can't do this, so I give up. But let's open our hearts this morning to hear the Holy Spirit instead. And the Holy Spirit brings conviction, not condemnation. And one of the biggest differences between conviction and condemnation is that condemnation is vague. You'll hear a voice in your head saying, you're a bad father, or you're a bad wife, or you're just not going to make it as a Christian. You're just terrible at this. But the Holy Spirit is specific. And the Holy Spirit will take an aspect of you as a father, or you as a wife, or you as a Christian, and say, my child, let's look at this. Let's work on this. Who's in control of this part of your life? You or me? And Jesus will be specific. For example, he might say to some of us as parents, to be a better parent, when your children speak to you, put your phone down. Pay attention. Listen to them. That's specific. Satan will say, you're a bad parent. So this morning, let's open our ears to hear the Holy Spirit instead of Satan trying to condemn us. I want you to remember that we are made up of three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. The moment we receive Jesus as our Savior, our spirit is saved. Our spirit is immediately set free from eternal death and eternal separation from Christ. But our soul and our body, that's a whole different ballgame. I don't know about you guys, but I can't say that my soul and my body are 100% controlled by the Holy Spirit. And those are the two areas of our lives where Lordship is a journey. And this morning I want us to remember constantly that Lordship is a journey. It is not a quick fix. It is not the moment Jesus enters my life, every issue in my life is sorted out. Every struggle I have is dealt with. I've been a Christian for 30 years and the Lord is still working on me. Thankfully, there's less to work on than 30 years ago. But there's still a lot to work on. For example, when I get annoyed with Mike, which happens very, very rarely, Guess who comes out? Not the Holy Spirit, not Jesus, not grace. There's a feisty half Italian that comes out. And it's usually that feisty half Italian that at the end of the, let's call it a discussion, I need to apologize to Mike. And I need to go before God again and say, Lord, in this aspect of my marriage, I'm still taking control. I am still coming out instead of you, Jesus. I submit again. I give you control again. And that is the journey that we walk in with the Lord with regards to our soul and our bodies. One of the scriptures that truly is central, I believe, to this message of Lordship is John 14, 15, that says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Do we truly love Jesus? And I don't have a doubt in my mind that those of you listening here this morning love Him, truly love Him. But there are areas of our lives where our love and our trust of Jesus, of God, is very closely linked. We love Him and we want to obey Him, but somehow we don't trust Him. We don't trust Him enough to be able to do what He has asked us to do. We don't trust that the creator of the universe knows better than me, knows me better than me, and knows what's best for me. So when he asks us to do things, we take control instead. I like being in control. I don't like it when I don't know what's going to happen next. If we're going on holiday, 
I plan our holiday, I research things and this is how I want things to happen and I love the structure and I love the planning. But I've had to learn to be more flexible because life doesn't always go according to plan. But that's a little thing in comparison with some of the things that God asks us to trust Him with. Do we trust Him, for example, with our finances? Can I give a tenth of my salary to the Lord and say, Lord, I trust you with this. You've asked me to do this and I will obey and I trust you. Can we trust God and say, Lord, even though I don't understand it, you've asked me to be baptized in water. What a strange thing to do. But can we trust that God knows the significance, the spiritual significance of water baptism far more than we do? Can we trust that that moment of humility, because it does take humility to get into a swimming pool and have someone dunk you under the water and believe that it has spiritual significance. But can we trust the Lord that we will do what He has asked us to do? And fundamentally, we must remember that when Jesus becomes our Lord, He becomes our Master. And I know for many of you, you hear the word Master and you think, I'm not going to have anyone tell me what to do. I'm not going to have another person order me around. And that is our first problem. It's not another person. It's God Almighty. God is not flawed. Humans are flawed. People who have had authority over us are flawed. So they have made mistakes. They have abused their authority. And through abusing their authority, they have abused us. They have served themselves. When they've told us to do things, it's been because they can gain from it. God is not that kind of master. God is a master who has your best interest at heart at all times. And we can never doubt that. In Romans it says we become slaves of righteousness and no longer slaves to sin. I would gladly become a slave of righteousness if I can move away from being a slave to sin. Where sin has a hold on my life. Where sin controls me. But where I can submit to the Lord and know, Jesus, you are in control. And I'm a slave to you, Jesus. One of the characters in the Bible that I think of when I think of Lordship is Daniel and his friends. They chose to not listen to the rulers of their time, but obey God in all things, at all times. And what's fascinating is when they are told that they're going to be thrown into the fire unless they bow down, their response is, we will not bow down. Either God will save us from the fire or we will spend eternity with Him, but we will not bow down. And isn't it incredible how they obeyed God, but they had no idea what the outcome would be. Sometimes we are willing to obey God if we know what the rewards are. I will tithe, Lord, if you open the floodgates of heaven. Now a month later, God hasn't opened the floodgates of heaven and we say, okay, well that didn't work. I'm not going to tithe anymore. That's not what it's about. Also, submitting to the Lord is not because of fear of consequences. We don't submit to the Lord and give Him Lordship of our lives because, oh, I'm so scared. What if God punishes me? What if something goes wrong? What if, oh, I've just got to submit? We do it because we love Him. I want my children to obey me because they love me. For example, two days ago, I asked one of my boys to unpack the dishwasher. And he looked at me quite defiantly and he says, and what if I don't? I was quite taken aback by the response. And my first response was, then I'll give you a hiding. And off he went and unpacked the dishwasher. And I realized that that's not quite the answer I wanted to give. But I was really taken aback by that. But what I wanted to say and what I should have said was, you serving us as a home. We all do things together because we love each other. And that is why you're helping. 
You're not helping because I'm going to give you a hiding. And if we are constantly obeying the Lord out of fear or out of rewards we can possibly get, we're missing the point. And we're constantly living in an unstable way. Our lives will be unstable. We'll be fearful, we'll be anxious, and we'll be unstable. Often in my life I can look at times where if I look at specific things and I think, gosh, I'm fearful, I'm anxious. And when I ask myself the question of who's in charge of this area, me or God, the answer most often is me. Because when I'm in charge, I become fearful and I become anxious. But when I hand it over to God again, a peace comes and I'm stable again. A long time ago, Mike shared a vision that God gave him about a boat with an anchor. If we are anchored in Jesus, even though the boat moves around on the waves because of the storms, it is still anchored. It won't drift away. But if we anchor ourselves in other people, then the two boats will eventually end up bashing each other to bits. Or the anchors will break because the boats will break and they'll separate and float around. Or if we anchor ourselves in our finances, it's an unstable anchor. We need to anchor ourselves in Jesus. And as we were discussing it in our preparation, I just felt the Lord saying to me, salvation and lordship is like that boat. The moment we accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we get into the boat. He has saved us from drowning. And there's an anchor on the boat. And that anchor is Lordship. And it's our choice to throw that anchor into Him and Him alone. So I ask you this morning, if there are areas where you are feeling shaky, check who is in charge of that area. Is it you or is it God? I want to read another scripture to you, actually two scriptures to you. Jesus left us with two important things. Number one, in Matthew 22, 37, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That means everything. The moment we love something more than Jesus, He is not Lord. Are there days where I love my children more than God? Yes. Are there days where I love Mike more than God? Yes. But what do I do? I go before God and I say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm placing things in the right order again. You first, then Mike, then my children, and then the church. And there are days where those things get muddled. Because we're human and we're not perfect. But as long as our heart attitude remains a heart that wants to love the Lord our God with everything that we are, God will grace us and He will help us daily to do that. The second thing Jesus left with us was a scripture you all know very well. And that's Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe, obey, all that I have commanded you. Now I have a question for you. If we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with everything that we are, He is our Lord. Can we obey that second scripture if we ourselves have not been obedient to certain fundamental, foundational truths in God's Word. How can I go out and baptize someone if I haven't been baptized? How can I make disciples asking people to obey the Word of God if I myself am not obeying the Word of God? Please hear me. I'm not asking for perfection. I am not perfect. I don't have every single thing in my life in place. But my heart is to say, Lord, help me. Where I'm wrong, teach me, direct me, bring people around me, Lord, that can help me to do that which you are asking me to do. 
So this morning, I, I really want to encourage you to look at the foundational truths in the Bible. I have found so often people come to me and they say, why is God not blessing my business? Why is God not blessing my finances? And if I ask them, are you tithing? The answer is no. There are certain first steps we need to take in order for God to bless us. Have you been baptized in water? Be obedient. Have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Be obedient. Are you being a witness? Are you sharing the love of God with those around you? Are you making disciples? I can promise you that if you've got those fundamental truths in place, you will begin to see God entrusting you with so much more. You'll begin to open things in your life that you never thought was possible because you took the basic steps of obedience. So this morning, friends, is much more an invitation to a life that you can live in authority and stability. Jesus was under authority. Many times in the Bible, Jesus says, I do what my Father tells me to do. We want to be like Jesus. So this morning, I want to raise my hand and say, Lord, I want to do what you tell me to do. And I'm asking you this morning, I'm inviting you this morning to go on that journey where you say, Lord, be Lord of my life. Take control of the areas in my life that I haven't given you authority in. And so often we look at our own lives and we look at the life of the church and they seem to be lacking authority and stability. And the question and the thing that's lacking is not authority and stability, it's most probably lordship. Because with lordship we gain authority and we gain stability. And within that stability is peace. When our lives are marked by peace and stability, people are drawn to Jesus in us. I want my life to reflect Jesus' Lordship. When people can look at my life and say, you're so calm, you seem so at peace, even though there's turmoil around you. And I want my answer to be, it's Jesus. He has anchored me. His Lordship and His salvation have anchored me. I am stable because of Him. So this morning, please, take a moment, even now as we end off, take a moment and look at your life. Where are you anxious? Where are you fearful? Where is peace lacking? Where is authority and stability lacking? And hand that back to Jesus. Lay it back at His feet and say, Jesus, it's yours. And tomorrow morning, when you wake up and you've maybe picked it up again, just give it back to Him again. Don't feel like a failure. Don't feel like, I can't do this because I have to do it every morning. You will realize that once you've handed it over to Jesus, maybe every day for a month, one morning you'll wake up and you realize, wow, I didn't pick it up again last night. I actually left it there. Wow, I've achieved something. It's not you. It's by the grace of God that He will give to you as you continue to surrender to Him. Hand everything over to God because He loves you. And because He loves you, we love Him and obey Him. Let's pray. Jesus, this morning we thank You. We thank You that we can place our lives in Your hands. Almighty Creator, all-knowing, all-present, that we can place every aspect of our lives in Your hands. No matter how scary it might feel, no matter how big that step of faith is, that we can trust you, knowing that you are a perfect, loving master, that you are our Lord, and that you will grace us to be able to do that which you have called us to do. We thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for us. 
And thank you that you walk with us in this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I want to encourage you that this coming week, we are starting with chapter 10 of the one-to-one. -one. Yes, we have mixed things up a little bit. We're not going to chapter 4. We are going to chapter 10. Next week, myself, Joanne and Annette are going to do a panel preach on the Bible and prayer. Please join us. Join us this week for our devotionals and enjoy your connect groups. Have an incredible day.